All right, so welcome back. Thank you again for watching. If you're new, I appreciate you checking in and I will do my best to make sure that you enjoy this video. So today we are actually doing something a little bit different. We're going to be repairing a little bit this Rolly Cord 3.5. I bought this online. Uh, I got it for about half of what it's worth. Now, personally, I won't be keeping this camera. I actually have two other Rolly Cords that I bought previously, and then I also have a Rolly Flex that I need to get repaired and tuned up a little bit before I can use that one. However, I do have a few friends who really wanted to get into medium format and they didn't want to spend too much, so I figured this would be a great camera for them. But before I give it away, I need to clean it, uh, take care of a few things just to make sure that I don't go giving someone a broken camera. <sighs> Ooh, that's good. Ooh. So this is the 3.5 Rolly Cord, and from the little research that I did, this particular model is from 1939, I think. I haven't looked up the serial number. I feel like I don't really need to, just because I'm not doing a full out review of this. I'm, well, maybe I am. I'm testing it out, I'm gonna show you some images, things like that. Didn't really want to look up the serial number and things. I guess I can, maybe I should, maybe I will, we'll see. So this camera is actually in really good shape. The glass, it doesn't look like there's any scratches or anything which is very nice. The ground glass looks great. I don't see any issues with that. It's a little dusty, I can clean that up, no problem. There is a little bit of fungus or something on the rear element of the viewing lens. Of course, for TLRs, this is gonna be the taking lens, and this is the viewing lens, the one that you're looking at. Side note with TLRs, always make sure that you remember what you're viewing is gonna be a little off from what you're taking. One thing I really like to do is create a lot of depth of field, so I'll put something, you know, partially in the frame really up close and then have my subject further off in the distance. So the portraits I've taken where I've done that, I actually had something in the person's face because I was just rookie mistake. Just don't do that, don't do that. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're just gonna be doing a little bit of cleaning, then I'm gonna go out to a local coffee shop where I used to work at. So I'll take some portraits with this there and make sure that everything works. Now I'm only gonna be doing one little cleaning to this camera before taking it out. Just because if that issue isn't fixed, then there's really no point in me going further before I send it off to have it fixed. So the only issue with this camera as far as functionality goes, from what I can tell, the shutter speeds on this camera go from one second to one over 300th of a second. At the higher speeds, like 300, 150, it seems to be working perfectly fine. The shutter speeds seem on time. However, when we get down to lower, like one over 25, <clears throat> and mainly one tenth of a second and lower, it seems to be really slow especially at one second. One second seems more like one and a half to two seconds. So TLRs, as you know, have leaf shutters. And so what it tells me when the lower shutter speeds aren't working properly is that there's something on those leaves. It could be rust, it could be mildew, it could be over lubricated and just getting over time, it's gotten dust and debris in it and now it's just sticking and it doesn't have enough speed or force to close that shutter. But at the higher speeds, it's fine. So I'm hoping that's really all it is. I can see a little bit of something on the leaf shutter just by taking a look at it from right here. So I'm pretty sure that'll be a quick fix and it'll be up and working perfectly after that. I've done it before on a few other cameras and it's solved the issue. So if that's all there is, then this camera will be fine. We'll be able to take it out and shoot with it. If that's not the issue, then that means the timer is off somehow and that's a little above my pay grade as far as repairs go. So I'm probably gonna have to send that off unless a buddy of mine here locally can fix it but I don't think he does that from what I can remember. Let's get to repairing this and then we'll take it out and get some shots. So what's nice about this cleaning is we don't actually need a whole lot of tools to get it done. It's a fairly simple repair, it's not super technical. That being said, you can still mess it up if you're not careful. How's that saying go? You can always add more, but you can't always take away. That's the same concept here. So go slowly, and if you need to, you can always go further, but you can't always go backwards. So for this repair, what we're gonna need is lighter fluid, Q-tips, blower, lens cloth, and then you're gonna need something to take off this glass. So I have these things which I don't know the technical name for. I got it off Amazon for a couple bucks. It was called a vacuum pad. That doesn't seem like a proper name for something like this. It's not very technical. Of course, what do I know? But it has all different sizes. And since I clean a lot of my own lenses and things like that, it's nice to have the options for bigger lenses or I can flip it around for something smaller. And I have a lot of different sizes to work with for different size glass. Extremely useful. Another thing that might work is if you have rubber gloves lying around the house or something like that or what was that rubber pad we used as kids to take off the lid to the things like that what was that it was just it's just a piece of rubber we just you open jars with a jar opener something like that i don't know 
Something like that would be perfect, and then you wouldn't have to spend money. So if you have one of those still, I don't think I do. Yeah, I really don't think I do. I'm older now, you know, I can open a jar with my hand. But when you are taking off this glass, you don't want to bend or break anything. And there is a possibility it could be stuck. If you see there's a lot of corrosion or rust or things like that, you might not be able to get it off yourself. This one I've already tested out. I know I can get the element off and we're going to show you how to do that now. For other camera models, you might need what they call a spanner. So on the glass, there's usually a groove on either side and that spanner fits in there and you turn it and that twists and takes off the glass or the plastic exterior so you can get inside the lens. This model, I don't need that for. All I need is the little rubber tool and we'll be able to get in there and clean it. One more little tool I like to use is a old contact case. I wear contacts, I have really bad eyesight, so without these, I'm practically blind. And every time I go to get a new contact solution, there's one of these in every box. I have like 20 of them, but so pro tip, this is great to put that lighter fluid in. You can also use it to store the screws whenever you take apart a camera, so you don't lose them, things like that. This might be big enough. This is also big enough I can put the glass right inside here without setting it on the table. Just so it's safe, I don't break it or anything, I can put it off to the side in this, which is nice. I am going to mark this so that I don't accidentally somehow end up putting my contacts into lighter fluid, because that's not what I want. So if you wear contacts or you know someone who does, take a few of these from them. You won't regret it. All right, so first off, we just need to get our tools in here. So let's just get those in there. Perfect. All right, so first, we're gonna take this lighter fluid and we're gonna put some into this little contact container. I should also mention, make sure your hands are clean, of course, and then a half paper towels on hand just in case you decide to spill anything. Too much lighter fluid will mess up your shutter, so make sure you are very careful using it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. We're done with this, so get rid of it. All right, next off. We're gonna be taking off this element right here. There is a little bit of fungus in this lens, but if I can't fix this, there's no point in fixing that. So we're gonna do this first, and if it works, then we'll clean that and we'll get to the rest of the things. So let's figure out which size spanner I need. Too big, too... There we go. Once you loosen it, you should be able to just do it by hand. Come on, any day now. There we go. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but there is a little bit of discoloration. It's not rust, but it looks like it's just been rubbing first and foremost. So we're gonna take just a little bit of lighter fluid and I'm just gonna very delicately and very gently clean the shutter. You don't wanna press too hard. You don't wanna bend anything or dislodge anything. You just wanna very carefully go over it and kind of wipe it down. And then we're gonna dry it off with the other hand before we kind of work it in and out of the shutter. And you want to kind of go with the shutter. You don't want to go against it and kind of move those blades out of place. You want to kind of work with it. Go clean that off. So now what I'm going to do is work this in. You don't want any sitting on the element. If you see it pooling or anything like that, you're using a little too much. You want to make sure you dry it off before you get it stuck into the element and make it worse. So right now we're at 1 10th shutter speed. And as you can see, that looks pretty good. Let's go up to 1 over 300. Cock that, nice and smooth. So that looks good, go to 125. That looks pretty good. Let's go down to one second. Ah, there it is. You can see that's pretty slow. So now I'm gonna put it on bulb just so I can get in there and clean it without it closing. The aperture could use a little bit of work too, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that while I'm at it. I'm not sure if you can tell, but those wear marks we had earlier are starting to clear off, and it looks like it's getting a little bit more smooth. And since you're at bulb, you can kind of hold it open where you want to and kind of work on those spots that you couldn't quite reach before because of them overlapping. You don't wanna get fibers into here. So after a while, replace it, get a different one. You really don't wanna get anything stuck in there. And if you see something in there, use the blower, things like that, cause you don't want that in there. So prevent that, I'm gonna clean it out again. Now it's still a little bit slow. So I think what I might have to do is take a look at the rear element. So what I'll do is I'll open up the aperture all the way to 3.5 so that it's wide open. And I'm gonna put this back down on bulb. That way I can open and close it as I need to. Pop this open there. All right, so I think that's pretty good. I am gonna go ahead and clean the back side of it too, just because I think that also needs a little tune up from what I can see. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this element back on. So in order to do that first, now in order to get to the back element, what I'm gonna have to probably do is I'm gonna have to take off this back door 
The newer models, they have a latch here, so you can easily just pop up that latch and take it off. This one being an older model, I'm gonna have to unscrew it and then take off this back window. And then the interior glass has that spanner latch that I talked about earlier. So I'm gonna need a spanner in order to get that off. So I'm not gonna show that process, but I'm gonna do, go ahead and do that now, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I have successfully cleaned both sides of this leaf shutter. I did have to take out the interior element on the taking lens and then clean that a little bit and then of course clean the other side of the leaf shutter. The last thing that's left to do is put a roll through it and see how it comes out. So what I'm gonna be doing is, uh, my, oof, should I use Portra 400 or should I use Fuji? I could do black and white. Meh. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the Portra because I like that for portraits. I'd rather use that on a camera that I know is working properly and not a test roll. And then I don't wanna use black and white either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Fuji. So I'll load that in here and we'll see how it goes. All right, so we are back and we're gonna take a look at those photos now. So I didn't get a chance to shoot any B-roll while I was out there. It was running late, it was already late in the afternoon. Didn't have a whole lot of daylight. So I did not shoot any video to go along with these photos. But I did go back and shoot some B-roll at the coffee shop. Nice. All right, so let's take a look at these photos. So I used Fuji Color Pro 400H on this Rolly Core to see if it worked out. And from what I can see, as I suspected, that little cleaning seemed to do the trick. Uh, I didn't have any light leaks, no issues at all. Of course, I said I was going to shoot portraits, and I have two. In my defense, I had four portraits at the beginning, but those didn't come out for some reason. Right, let me just let me just show you here real quick. But one thing I didn't bother to pay attention to is that on the film advance here, there is actually a button, which is right there in the center, which I just thought was kind of worn down. I didn't realize it was actually a button, but that has to be pressed after each shot in order to advance the film to your next frame. So somehow the first four portraits that I took, I never saw. So somehow while I was trying to figure out the advance, I didn't pull the film or anything like that. I left it in there. I figured I would just advance it and it would be fine. Uh, but somehow or another, I lost those first four shots, which is kind of a bummer. I was pretty excited about one or two of them. But I sent it off to be developed. I didn't develop this role myself. Even if it was dramatically under or overexposed, they would have sent me the negatives just to have. So there just must not have been anything on them at all. So I'm trying to figure out why that is and how that happened. I'm gonna have to do a little more research on that. But anyways, let's get back into the ones that did come out. So we have this first one here. This is Julia. So I took a portrait of her. As you can see, she is not in focus. I'm off to a great start, whatever. But you can see that the signage right there behind her face is in focus. And then of course her jeans down there at the bottom of the frame and the other side with the door, that is all in focus. The coloring is great. I love those reds, they really pop. But her face is not in focus. I will say I did have a little bit of trouble getting the pinpoint focus. This model doesn't have the magnifying glass that pops up on top. With the newer model that I use a lot more often, there is a magnifying glass that pops up right there and you can use that to kind of pinpoint your focus this one doesn't have that so you're gonna have to get really close to this and I didn't so because I didn't get that close my focus is a little bit off which is why Julia is not in focus fantastic off to a great start doing really good 
Okay, so next up is this photo of the train station. If I could go back and redo this one, I would probably change my angle a little bit and get more of that taxi there in the front left corner because it just gives a little more depth of feel and adds to the composition. I'm really trying to figure out where to go creatively as far as shooting square format. It's just not something I'm really used to. Uh, I really like having that wide ratio just so I can create more depth of field. You have more room to work with. I mean, you can create more leading lines, things like that. So shooting square, it's kind of just different for me. I mean, I mean, yes, Instagram is all square format, but I'm just not used to shooting that way right out of the camera. So I'm just trying to figure out where to go with that and how to create those strong compositions with that right out of the camera. But this one overall, not too bad. There's not really a central subject or anything like that. Um, as far as lighting goes and colors, it's pretty good, accurate. I am gonna go back to this escalator several times. During the day, the sun sets right into that window. And as people go up the escalator, they get right into that lighting and then disappear. It creates a nice silhouette. And then also at night, it's got a great look to it too, people coming and going up that escalator. So I am gonna revisit that a few times. There's a few different shots I wanna try and get. I just need some people moving around, things like that. Okay, as you can see again, leading lines with the rooftops and that garage off in the distance. I did take two of this photo. I took one, the proper exposure, which is this one. And then I underexposed one a little bit. I wanted to see if I would get more detail in the sky and if I would lose much in these trees. I lost a little bit in the trees, but I didn't really gain anything from the sky, so this is the better one. Again, just trying to play around with different things, see what works. So these are those lights that we went to in the last video to get that bouquet. Now looking back at it again, as you can see, they're very close together. So this probably wasn't the best shot spot to shoot this. Uh, because they're so close together, it's just one big light so you don't get a lot of separation. You can't see the individual shapes of each of those lights with the bouquet, but it was still fun, still interesting. Next up, this photo. So not an overly interesting subject matter, but I saw these two bikes with the contrasting colors. So I really just wanted to see what kind of color I could get with this camera, as well as with this film stock. These are all post edits. I did dull this color down a little bit, especially these greens. They were a little too bright. It was kind of distracting for me. And overall, there was a little bit of yellow tone. So I dulled the temperature a little bit, which caused me to lose some yellow in the bike here. I could bring that back if I wanted to. And then the reds, the reds look great. So the focusing, other than that first portrait, of course, has been pretty accurate. No problem picking up this one. So this is the last photo of the day. So we're in this back alley. The sun had already set, it was getting really dark. And I had Josh sit down in front of this wall. Uh, we'd already lost a lot of light. I shot this at 1 30th of a second, which is why you can tell it's got a little bit of motion blur to it. The focus isn't off. If you look at the whole thing, none of it is spot on focus, but you can see there's a little bit of motion blur to it if you zoom in. But for 1 30th of a second, so in his hair and his beard here, you can see there's a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, because it was still underexposed, and I knew that going into it. We lost a lot of detail on the reds, and our blacks aren't as crisp, aren't as dark, because we just didn't expose it properly. But what this tells me is that if this shot was underexposed at 1 30th of a second, then the little repair we did probably fixed the issue. I didn't go down to one second and shoot any exposures at that, but how often are you gonna shoot at one second? So I'm not too worried about it. So I think the cleaning that we did helped out and made the shutter speed a little more accurate. So I think this camera is ready to leave my shelf. As I said, it'll be going to one of a few friends, but the good news is if it doesn't work, they know where to find me. So yes, it has been a couple days since we took these photos. As you can see, I've changed. I've rearranged my little space here, which is great. I like it. I no longer have to sit here and wonder what to do with my hands. I don't have that problem anymore. I got my desk. And since I moved my desk up, I can sit closer. I can shoot wider. I can get more in the back. I can hold a camera and know that it's in the frame. It's nice. And it also makes me look a lot bigger, which is a good thing, I guess. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watched the whole thing. I have a few more in the works coming out pretty soon. So be sure to keep checking in. We got a lot coming your way.